Hello and welcome to Tuesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Real quick, I wanted to say happy birthday to Tuesday News Day. Two years ago, I started this series and well, here we are, still covering VR news every Wednesday, I mean Tuesday. Thank you to everyone that's been here this whole time, and it also happens to be my birthday too, so it's a special day over here, and I've got some really cool stuff planned in the very near future. It's E3 week, and the gaming industry is showing off its best titles for better or worse, and VR did have some presence. Also, if you remember all of the leaks leading up to the Quest 2's launch, well, it's about that time again. This time for Facebook and Sony's next headset. The first solid leaks have just sprouted, and Facebook buys another successful VR studio as well as full body tracking using only webcams and it actually looks good. That and so much more, let's just get right into the news. So last week I did mention that no projects from Oculus Studios would be announced during E3. Well, they weren't lying for some surprise, we didn't get anything from them. However, Upload VR did hold its annual showcase for upcoming VR titles from developers big and small, and I'll do a quick recap of the entire event. Vertigo Games, publisher behind Arizona Sunshine and the upcoming After the Fall, showed off a game that I've been excited about for months. It's basically Guitar Hero, but in VR and no plastic controllers. Instead, you use only your hands with the Quest 2's hand tracking. This game is called Unplugged. I know I grew up with Guitar Hero and it was a big part of my life, so this is one that I'm excited about. And they're actually bringing one of the original Guitar Hero developers, well, sort of, the lead guitarist and mapper Marcus Henderson on for the title. Another game is Into Hoop, a hand tracking quest basketball game and an interesting entry here. I played a lot of Nerf as a kid and apparently the franchise is still going strong because a Nerf VR game has been announced to come to the quest next year. However, no gameplay was shown. Another great one is A Township Tale, one of my favorite VR games that I honestly don't talk about enough is also getting a quest release. You'll probably notice something here. Lots and lots of quest content and a few PSVR exclusives like Fract, but practically no PC VR games in sight besides this one that looks pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of The Forest, and it's called Green Hell. It's a survival VR game coming to PC first in quarter three of this year, then Quest later. Probably the one I'm most excited about. And yeah, nothing massively huge, but hopefully you found a few things that you're looking forward to. Oh, also, Larsenauts is releasing in two days, and it's already getting some huge updates like manual reload and a few other accessibility options. Fingers crossed for this one, Overwatch in VR, please. VR is heating up incredibly fast. So far since its consumer inception, we've pretty much been counting every million users starting with one, then two million, and every milestone has been massive. Right now, it's estimated between three to eight million Quest 2s have been sold, while PSVR holds strong at about five million users. And SteamVR has around two million monthly active users. Now, I couldn't be happier or prouder of all of these milestones, but estimates show that this is only the beginning of a truly exponential growth curve. Analyst Ming Chikuo, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, estimates that in 2021 alone, Facebook is expected to sell eight to nine million Quest 2s, and in 2022, that number could jump all the way to 18 to 20 million units. Yeah, VR is just getting started. I mean, Facebook made a super cheap device that ended up being pretty darn good, and I think we can all see exactly why all of these games are getting released to Quest and not necessarily PC as a focus. And if you're interested, I have a full nine month review of the headset and its effects on the entire industry that I posted a few days ago, but we've got way more to cover here. Let's get right into the meat of this episode. We're talking maybe Quest 3 or more likely a Quest Pro. Last year before the Quest 2's release, months leading up to that date, we had a ton of leaks and analysts dropping information on the headset. And this seems to be the very first inkling of solid evidence that the hardware is already starting some phase of manufacture. We already know a Quest 3 or maybe a Quest Pro is coming at some point. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg and Andrew Bosworth have confirmed that. But this is pretty much the first time news is broke regarding the product actually getting made. So Oculus has used the exact same lenses for quite a while. In fact, the Quest, Rift S, Quest 2, and Go all use the exact same lenses made quite a while ago, back in 2017 or maybe even before that. And if there's one thing we've learned about VR hardware over time is that lens design has a massive effect on everything, from clarity to color and contrast, glare, and of course, 
field of view. Now, there's nothing wrong with these existing lenses, and they work perfectly fine, but pretty much if Oculus wants a higher field of view in their next headsets, which I'm pretty sure all of us do, the lenses are one of the biggest features holding it back. Well, those exact new lenses have been leaked, well, sort of. And this is backed up by an industry analyst that says it has viewed active orders for extremely high quantities of new, more expensive lenses to be manufactured for Facebook and Sony. Now, I personally don't see this as a direct Quest 3, since one, Bosworth said the product doesn't quite exist yet, even though it still is on the table, but I could see these lenses being for a hypothetical Quest Pro, likely being powered by the same XR2 chip that's currently in the Quest 2, but with significantly better cooling, allowing for far better performance, and a wider and taller field of view. Bosworth has already mentioned that they're very interested in increasing the vertical field of view as well, well, as he believes it has more advantages over a wide field of view. It's interesting that Sony is also thrown into this conversation, as we've all been hearing the leaks and rumors around a supposed PlayStation VR 2 coming sometime in 2022 or later. And sometime in 2022 is also when I expect to see new headsets from Oculus, that likely being a Quest 2 Pro. Basically the same platform with a litany of small but important upgrades. In case you didn't know, VR lenses are actually really expensive to develop and manufacture, which makes sense why Oculus has used the same Super Libra G lenses for four years now. The more you make, the cheaper it gets, but it's about time for a refresh. I'm expecting to hear more concrete information on the Quest Pro platform this September at Facebook Connect 8, the annual conference where things like this are usually announced. Everything with this leak lines up very cleanly, including the note being from the same manufacturer that makes Oculus's current lenses. I'll keep you updated if I hear any more. But but now it's time for a me Break. So I was walking through a Nike outlet recently and something caught my eye. These are the Nike Quest 2s. <laughs> now you can have a Quest on from head to toe, but no, that doesn't mean full body tracking. <laughs> I don't know. I just found it kind of funny and it's an interesting coincidence and maybe it'll help with the uh, VR legs. But let's get right back to the news because there's still a lot left to cover. Facebook has been on an acquisition spree the past year, buying up all sorts of VR developers. So far, they've purchased Beat Games, creators of, of course, Beat Saber, Sansaru Games, developers behind Asgard's Wrath, Ready at Dawn, creator of Echo Arena and Lone Echo, Downpour Interactive, the team behind Onward, and the latest, Big Box, developers of the hit game Population One. Now, I see some hate behind this, but look at how many players are playing Population One. Quite a few to say the least. It's been one of the fastest selling, most successful multiplayer VR games ever released, and Steam shows around 100 concurrent players on Steam VR, and that's at its best. I estimate that about 90 plus percent of their entire player base is on the Quest platform already. So honestly, unless Big Box had some other plans or wanted to maintain being an independent studio, an official acquisition by Facebook makes sense. That's where their players are and that's where the money's at. However, this still makes me very wary. As I've said before, one company owns 100% market share of standalone VR, dominates PC VR, and now owns owns the studios behind some of the most successful VR games ever made, and I don't see this acquisition spree ending anytime soon. The question isn't, is it over yet? It's likely, who's next? And honestly, I just hope that Facebook does good with these companies and gives them the funding they need to make really good VR content. I'd be happy if that happens. Some very positive news, if you're a virtual desktop user on the Quest or Quest 2, you're gonna be really happy. Guy Godin is still kicking and he's killing it making wireless PC VR as as good as possible. Guy is the developer of Virtual Desktop that recently kind of got kicked in the teeth with Airlink, and he's been working with Qualcomm to bring some new features to the app like an improved synchronous space warp, allowing your PC to render at half the frame rate needed to clear up some resources or allow for better visuals on lower end PCs. The big difference here between Oculus's built-in software called Asynchronous Space Warp, which does a similar thing, is that the Quest unit itself generates the missing frames, not your PC. This makes SSW significantly faster than the currently existing ASW, lower latency, and more importantly, doesn't use your computer's resources to generate that missing frame, allowing, like I said, lower end systems and less powerful graphics cards to do far more in VR. If you do have a lower end system, I'd suggest maybe trying it out. You may be happy with the results and extra frames that you get. Now, I'm a huge fan of full body tracking and motion capture, and it's something I pretty much do every day, but that's also enabled by the 
the fact that I have base stations and vibe trackers, two things that almost every Quest owner doesn't have. Well, a company known as Akia Research Institute, VR Lab, just released its demo for a software suite that allows users to do full body tracking with just two cameras. This could be two webcams or a webcam paired with a smartphone camera. While the software they're showing off is about $100, it seems like a great way for people to affordably try out full body tracking. And it looks pretty darn good actually. Other cheap camera based full body tracking usually has high latency and the tracking precision doesn't come close to Vive trackers. But from what I've seen, this looks pretty convincing and even captures more points than what a basic Vive tracker setup will do. I will be putting up a video soon showing off all of these tracking methods and comparing them, so stay tuned for that. The Vive Pro 2's wireless adapter now supports a higher resolution than initially promised. For those who don't know, the adapter was only able to transmit a resolution of 2448 by 1224 at 90Hz. The new beta update allows for 3264 by 1632 at 90Hz. While this is still not near the native resolution that the Vive Pro 2 can reach with its wired connection, it's a much welcome change. And my Vive Pro 2 review, including this information, should be coming later this week. I will be doing a fun birthday stream right after this on Twitch, so come on over and say what's up. Also, join up in my Discord server for the coolest VR community on the planet. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. Like VRChamp, Benji, Biz, CBCJ79, Debonair Fab, Destroyer Biscuit, Dysfunctional Potato, Fur Trap, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, It's Lumi, Jonathan, KR, Lucid VR, Mud King, Pixel Thomas, Ridbo, Ronzarelli, That Brock Guy, Very Evil Shadow, and Zale. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out. <laughs>